Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Got my slippers on. Same. Comfort. Hi, guys. Welcome back to another episode of Pick Your Brain Podcast, a platform to showcase creatives, social issues, mental health, and community empowerment. I'm Simone. It's Kyle. Champ. <laughs> Mike D. <laughs> <laughs> that whoa! How Mike did you? D. Mike D. That didn't even sound like you. It sounded like you said Mike Deep. Mike Dees. <laughs> okay, before we start, I just wanna, I just wanna cl- quickly say, I think your your placement for your tattoo is so funny. Do you know why? Why? Because literally all your tattoos right now are of hands. So instead of getting an, another hand tattoo, you got a tattoo on your hand. <laughs> That's hella funny. Yeah, I got a hand one here. A hand one, one on my there. chest. And now it's on my hand over here. I was like, what's up with Kyle and hands? No, I didn't realize that until you said that. Yeah. yeah I wanted my, to wait. My next too. one, I'm going to get actually my half sleep starting here, not from mm. up here. Mm. So it doesn't look weird. I'm going to get it over here. I'll fill what it did, you, what did you get your tattoo? Yesterday. That shit hella hurt how, right here on the knuckle. How much it cost? Uh, 200. Shout That's out the bad. brother. Shout out the, or the, hey, who the person is. Shout out to Fook from New Generation Tattoo. Hit your boy Fook up right over that. there. Fook did that. Fook did this. Yeah, Fook did that one. <laughs> who, who did that? Who did Fook, that? Fook from who New did that? Who did that? Tattoo. Shout out, shout out. Yeah, the same person. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> the same person. He did, my, he did this tattoo as well too and then my other tattoo over okay. here. Okay. Did yeah. you guys know that my hand was used as a model for his chest? <laughs> no way. <laughs> no, it's oh. not. That would have been cool. Uh, Anyways. Well, that's, the, a, that's actually a good topic. We'll talk about tattoos next time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he doesn't have a tattoo. You don't have a tattoo? Oh, yeah, and we could talk about why he doesn't have a tattoo. There okay, we go. Okay, you know okay. Let's go. go. But for okay. today, Our what topic are we doing? is human connection shout Ooh. out to brian shout out to the toko Ooh. Yeah, one of our fans it. He, he watches He's it like every day a fan. or every week i mean shout week. out shout out let's go every yeah, day shout he out. like replays the episodes i gotta watch my pyb fix today <laughs> 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 i always walk into work and it's like hey bro that episode <laughs> it's just a little thumbs up thing <laughs> closer i get to you is that the human connection yeah, because you get closer to people through <laughs> human connection. There you go. <laughs> Mind blown. So how does one get close to another? How do you guys... So let's let's do this. How do you guys... Let's see. Do you... How do I phrase this? How do you get... Yeah, same question. How do you guys get close to people? Like initial... Like how do you become friends with someone? Mm. Mm. From the from the from the get go, from scratch all the way to yeah. the like you could say how obviously friendships through school, but like anything, any type of friendship. How would you say is like? Can I go first? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go you ahead. cannot go first. State Farm. Let's go. Yeah. State Farm. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle, that's it. What? Drop the mic. <laughs> yeah. Do, so, 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 so the question was, how do you make friends? How do you get okay. friends? Yeah. With Kyle. <laughs> Literally everybody Kyle. in my circle, it's I've known Kyle. them through Kyle. So like I got to know you because of Kyle. I got True. to know you because of Kyle. Uh. Most of our uh, homies in the clique, I got to know them because of Kyle. So like, <laughs> so that's how okay. you make friends. Through Kyle. <laughs> okay, but, other friends, but wait, though. how did you... <laughs> you know, Get to know Kyle. Oh my God! Oh. There we go. Deeper, bro. Go deeper. Did, didn't we talk about this during? Oh like, yeah, we my did. First episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He uh, moved down. Uh, he moved in my street, and uh, I got scared as fuck when I saw his brother. <laughs> <laughs> his brother. Yeah. You, you met my brother first. <laughs> yeah. I, so I met uh, Isaiah first, and so what it was was one day I went to go get groceries with my uncle, and as I was you know taking down the bags from the truck, um, I just see his brother. Uh, <laughs> in a camo jacket with a bandana over his face and he's got like a toy ak-47 mm-hmm. and he's just like running Nerf around I, I think it's like those ones you know where you put like the stupid little like um things BB where, like, no, BB no, gun, gun, but, like you know how when you you know when you click it it like just oh, the air gun? airsoft I, not airsoft but it's just like the smoke thing it's like you, it's like some kind of powder and then oh, when you okay. put it in 
Like, yeah. I thought it was a Nerf gun. No, no. Dude, I said AK-47, bro. You think Nerf gonna make that? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I, that's how I got, uh, met Isaiah. And I was like, oh, fuck. Mm. And then uh, eventually it was just like, oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how we got to talking, but it was mm. just like, hey, I got a brother named Kyle. And I was like, fucking Kyle, bro. Because <laughs> I just thought of the name. I was like, who the fuck is named Kyle? <laughs> fucking Kyle. And then I got to know this guy in his jean shorts. And I was like. I got long shorts today. Long jeans today. <laughs> I was like. That's a homie right there, bro. So what, what is the process in essence? Yes, yeah. you grew up in the same block. You all got to engage. What is the slow process of getting deeper connection with that individual? Yeah. I think it's hard in the sense that the way I created friendships back in the day is significantly different than how I make connections today. Like how I get to meet people, interact with people. Because based on just growing up and also just education not necessarily just like school stuff but just formulating my character um much like a scorpio when i meet new people <laughs> i keep them at a distance bro like i first have to like see what you're about analyze that sort of stuff so like when we're i mean i mean we can like meet each other and hang out like 20 times 15 of those times i like even though i'm kicking it with you and having a great time in the back of my mind i'm just like all right, let me see if you use the shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I also think as a kid, it's so much easier making friends. Yeah. You just be like, Hi. Hi. <laughs> you my friend? Yeah. We're and then friends. start hanging out with your friend. You like, like crayons? Same thing. If you want a boyfriend when you're like kindergarten, oh. you want to be my girlfriend? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's so easy yeah, yeah, when yeah. you're a kid. That's why like, I feel like when parents move, what? <laughs> In fifth grade, technically... That's when I had my first girlfriend and it was the funniest shit because it was similar to that. They were just like, I I was just like, I liked somebody. Right. But it was like, you know, just some dumb shit. Yeah. They're like, do you want to be so-and-so's boyfriend? And I was like, what? And that was it. Apparently uh, that whole last week I was with this person and <laughs> they broke up with me before I knew I was with them in the first so place. Funny. Oh my God. Wait, I got, I got yeah. the news. They're just like, yo, she wants to break up with you. And I was like, Ooh. okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're done. That's so Wait, can you imagine doing that right now? That's some crazy shit. Like, hey, yo, you want hi. Oh, you know what's hella f Like, hi, do you No. Okay, so I feel like at work, I don't know because there's this one where this one girl that always comes up and um what's this called she's the nice literally the nicest person ever and everyone knows her name she's like a usual here and she's like oh hey Amanda what's up like hey here's this here's that and I feel like you could still kind of do that now but you are more susceptible to failure you know uh, what I'm saying mm. Like, as a kid, I feel like everyone's like that. Mm. But now it's like, you can do that, but at the risk of, like, the, a person saying, like, what the fuck? Yeah. Because... You, you know the difference in terms of that age mm -hmm. and now? It's the frequency of time you spend together. Because mm. you guys are always together, in a sense. Plus, yeah, yeah they have no intentions other than just... Yeah. Now it's kind of harder to make friends. Yeah. Because we're kind of on our own, doing our yeah. own thing. You know it's not I mean? like everybody goes to school at this time. Goes yeah, yeah, yeah. Time. So when you get out of school, yeah. like it's college, it's harder to make friends outside yeah, of college. Yeah, for sure. Plus, it's also like the process of just being like in the context of just the U.S., right? You undergo a process of socialization. So mm -hmm. as kids, you know what I'm saying? Like they just see each other as just people, right? Yeah. But I mean, you grow up and then like you get hit with a bunch of like bullshit, like, oh, different races, different colors. And, you know, like uh, a lot of kids are taught that certain others are seen as others in this sort mm, of stuff so I that's see. what i mean by like that process of socialization mm -hmm. so it's just sort of like now there's these stigmas stigmas and stereotypes attached and so like that also can impact um different st different strokes for different folks and i'm saying not for all, sure. not all yeah. folks are like that but there is still that like remnant mm -hmm. inside mm -hmm. your head yeah. as you grow older yeah i can see that too one thing i learned uh, from uh making human connections so with my job uh personal training it requires me to find a connection with that person in one hour. Yeah, that's you how you get. About it, that's how you get them signed up, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, Wait, I mean, class. I mean, no, 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 no. no, no, like, no. Like, so, like, for example, like, let's say you're working at the gym and you're doing your like sets wrong. Like, I'll come up to you and like, hey, you know, if you need help with that. And then what I what happens is we set up like a free hour consultation, and I convince them in that hour to uh, 
purchase personal training, right? But I mean, you know, uh, of course, upcoming, if you think about the money, it's never going to turn out right because they can see that you're money hungry. So I actually take it from the approach of the heart where I find a connection with them. So like what I'll do is I'll try to find something similar and I'll always ask uh, about them rather than myself. You know what I'm saying? I feel like with anyone, if you just ask them about themselves, they'll tell you it just like that. That's what I've started to like learn and pick up from just trying to connect with people most of the time. And I think what how the process undergoes too is you give one, they t- and or you give one, and then they give a little bit of themselves, and you guys yeah, kind of just start matching the energies, mm. so forth and so forth. And I think a good like example for that too is like with me when I was. Well, this is why I really like I don't know when I went to, when I go to Sacramento or like go up there. People are just they talk to each other more like randomly, and I just like this like for example this one time I think I already told you guys the story like off camera but it was my friend's birthday and I and we were walking out the store and I was like hey I really like your hair and the girl was like thanks I really like your pants she was like where'd you get them and I was like oh I got them from this store da, da, da. and we just like sparked up a conversation and I feel like I really feel like if I wasn't if you know if we weren't walking out and I just kept talking to her a little bit more I could be like oh what's your Instagram and just like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. be friends like that, you know what I'm saying? Want to be my yeah. friend? <laughs> right. right, yeah, that's like the that's equivalent to want to be my friend. Right, right. And like that same day too, I went. We were at the restaurant. We went to the bathroom, and this girl was like, "Oh my gosh, I love your outfit!" And I was like, "Thank you. You're so pretty." And like you know, we were just like, you know, through compliments, just yeah. like give one, yeah, uh, making a connection through that. Why don't you do that with me, yeah. Kyle? <laughs> He's like, I don't I need told to. I'm you had a nice record today, years. bro. That is true. Nice cut, G. Yeah, <laughs> man, nice cut, G. I better get texts every day about that shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, can I clarify just two things that I mentioned earlier? Go ahead. So one, when I said bullshit about like color and race, I'm not trying to subscribe to the, you know, ignorant rhetoric that color blindness is, you know, like there's no such things as colors or I don't see races, you know, like white people try to play off just to like not really talk about race. So I was I was just saying that society teaches us, you know, to see colors and race and I was just mentioning on that. And then the other thing I wanted to mention Okay, so when I say when I meet people and like I got like a little bit of space and stuff like that, it's not like I'm a judgmental prick or that. Um, <laughs> not in the sense of like, Are you, you know, sure though? You sure? Well, okay, not in the sense of like the petty ass like uh asshole type where i'm just like you're not good enough to be in my presence not like that but just more so like i'll be cool with you like if i meet new people like i'll I'll interact as normal that sort of stuff but in terms of like getting to know me like Mm -hmm. my inner layers that's where i kind of like put a little bit of a wall and blockage so that's what i mean by like Mm -hmm. we can hang out like 20 times but like by time 15 you know you still may not know a lot, a lot about me. Like I keep my personal shit sort of at a at a distance. You know what I'm saying? Like I gotta sp- I gotta see that you're real and that sort of stuff. Like you're a chill, genuine, cool person. Because if you kind of like petty Pisces, um, you know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> oh my um, gosh. I'm just gonna Shots be like, fired. Uh, not all Pisces, but okay, you, okay. Some, you know who you are. <laughs> I see. Yeah, there's um, layers to this. I think too Onion. another. Another, yeah, the like you said too, because with me, when I meet new people, like let's say for example, work, if I go into a new workspace, I feel like it doesn't take me that long to build the connection with them. And for them, it's weird for them to tell me like all of their life stories. Like, I hope no one from work sees this, but like literally, like all everyone at work, like. <laughs> they, Exposed. they talk you know like i don't want to say we all talk shit but like we we spill the tea you know what i'm saying For like sure. and i'm just like okay like they're comfortable with me saying all this but they don't know anything about me which what? is interesting, you know? But I guess for, like, work, it's way easier just because you're with those people for, uh-huh. like, a long period of time. But, like, I don't know, just noticing people, how, like, other people interact, especially Kyle, too, how Kyle interacts. Because Kyle has all these friends, right? And all these connections. Mm-hmm. But come to think of it, I know Kyle at a different level than a lot of these people. But I feel like a lot of these people feel so connected to Kyle. And mm-hmm. I just feel like it's because of how you mentioned before how you ask about them to, like you know what uh-huh, i'm saying uh-huh. like so you make them feel comfortable yeah 
with talking to you yeah. without actually really knowing yeah. you. Mike's like that too, you know all the saying? time. <laughs> yeah, he's exactly like that. Yeah. I know the. Because <laughs> like I feel like sometimes we're like, like oh, yeah, yeah, people don't sit back and they're like, wait a minute. Oh, no, they don't realize. That. I know, yeah. like this person knows so much shit about me, but I yeah. know nothing about we're them. <laughs> so we all relate. <laughs> you know, hey, what I'm yo, saying? Mike. When Simone said spill in the tea, I was like, what was that word you said before we started shooting? <laughs> what did he say? Chismis. <laughs> oh, chismis, yeah. Yeah, we, dude, chismosas up in there. Chismis. Chismis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think it's natural in the workplace. Yeah. I mean, it's, we were just talking about a chismis in terms of gossip. It's mm. actually, yeah, it's natural for people to do it, 80%. It, it happens 80% of our life. Yeah. yeah. We talk about, it's, you know, it's what we observe around us. Yeah. And there's also a sense of like, when you're actually sharing with people your, what you observe, it's a way of building bond with people. Yeah. In a sense. Yeah. Unless it's mal intent, that's different. But it's yeah. just, just yeah. generally like, you know, yeah. you're sharing what your thoughts are in regards to things, ideas, and sometimes also individuals. Yeah. You know? So that's cool that people feel comfortable that they can come to you in essence. Yeah, yeah. that's good. And yeah. So, can I tell you about my stuff? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I know you've been holding your tongue. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> no, I'll play, I'll play. Go ahead. Oh, no, you're going to No, yeah, no. Go, go. Oh, no, no. I was going to hop off her. I'm done, I'm done. <laughs> okay, good, okay. Well, what Simone was saying, like, yeah, you know, like, uh, me and her, like, we'll understand each other on a more deeper level. I feel like with relationships, interpersonally, right, mm -hmm. uh, you have a certain sense of deepness with each person. And all it really is with that is how much you can allow each other to, like, you know, spread that love overall. Yeah. Like, if someone's going to have a wall with something, then your relationship will always stay, you know, stagnant. Yeah. But if you're both are able to help challenge each other and help each other grow, mm -hmm. they'll just keep rising up. You know what? I think I know what's the perfect analogy for my, like, connections with people mm -hmm. it's like the solar system like <laughs> okay. if i'm at the if i'm at the center of the sun right yeah. like that's me right my close homies they're like mercury like okay. that's how close they Am are I to mercury? me what the fuck <laughs> why is that even a question bro <laughs> Yeah, you are you Earth? You're, you're Kyle, Earth? Did I not just say Kyle? Don't be I'm insecure the... about your friendship. <laughs> no, 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 no. The reason why I said, why are you even asking that question? Is because, like, bro, it's just a joke. Like you and I, we go I just, all the way I back, joke, bro. bro. Chill. Why are you even asking chill, if you're Mercury? Chill, chill. It's all good. <laughs> you're like the hydrogen on my sun, bro. That's how close we are. <laughs> uh, maybe that's a little bit too close. Can Should we, we leave? <laughs> Should we go somewhere else? Yeah, they need a room. Leave them alone. <laughs> no, nah, but okay, but on the real man, Kyle, we're hella tight, we're hella close, you know what I'm saying? So I see as a real homie of mine. But like there's some folks who are kind of like Jupiter to me. Jupiter. Where it's just sort of like, yeah, I know you, but like if do I want you kind of closer in my life? It's just sort of like either I don't know you as well, or there's some things in your character where it's just sort of like, I don't really want I don't want to like I don't know if I really want to give you the chance to like gravitate more closer, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's kind of how I see some of my Ooh. friendships too. Cause as Kyle you mentioned, right? There's different levels. There and is. sometimes based on certain people's personalities, traits, whatever, uh, they build up these walls. <laughs> And so it's just sort of like, I mean, it's two ways, right? Like you have your own ideas, perspective on it, but then the other person has their own ways, mannerisms, perspective on it. Mm. So it's just sort of like, I mean, whether it's my side or your side, I mean, there's still that sort of wall. So it's just sort of like, for me, it's just sort of like, I mean, just that gravity bond is just not as close. So that's why you're a little bit more on the periphery. Gravity. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's um, the pushing yeah. full factor, huh? Yeah, bro. Science. <laughs> like, who's the moon to my earth? You feel me? Who pushes and pulls my ties? Okay. <laughs> Whoa, that sounded good. Are you taking applications? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was no, gonna say, Simone, really. that's probably like whatever streaming Netflix or uh, uh, streaming uh, network you're on, bro. That's your moon, right? Bruh. That's your. Right. That's what your Snapchats be looking like, bro. <laughs> no, really. <laughs> Today's show. <laughs> Wait, I'm kidding. Are you are are you taking applications? To be my friend, best friend? No, for moon, oh. for, for being the moon. Oh, being the pool to yeah. my tides? Are you, taking, are you open to applications? I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm not opposed to any applications. Okay, shout out, let's go. Do you Dude, want be. to be the moon to my earth? No, 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 no. Better. Do you want to be Samoon? Uh, <laughs> Samoon. <laughs> my Samoon. <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Ooh. Wait, I'm, I'm curious, Jonathan. 
In terms yeah. of your relationship with your partner, so what was that process of getting close to her and getting to know her in that deeper level? Oh my God, bro. Holy shit. Have, have I really talked that much about her at all? Like just general, general question. She'd be popping up. She'd popping but up. Have yeah. I yeah. really gotten in depth about her? But not, not no. in depth. I oh, think, you, no, I think the furthest you talked about is just like how, she, how you guys are in the relationship, how she like sometimes like is like needs her own space and how mm. you're like, yeah, yeah. just like and that. And how happy you are. Yeah, and you like bro. my girl, my girl, my girl, my girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But my never girl. in the sense of the deeper sense. So we're asking you. Know, oh, okay. So this is the weirdest thing actually, because she's actually my first and only partner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, I was single for like 20 years. Shout out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but basically, um, kind of providing a little bit of backstory before I got to know her. There was this one chick that I was like interested in and that sort of stuff. And, you know, it was within my same realm, right? Like politics, yeah. ethnic studies. And uh, I think I mentioned this last podcast, but, you know, I'm a very humorous guy. You know what I'm saying? And like, I always like to do dumb bits and like just all this stupid shit, right? Just trying to have a good time. And so one day I do a Trump impersonation. And that was kind of like a running gag I had, right? Just like, look at this dumb, like, asshole, right? And so um, before she would laugh at it or something, but then that one day she was like, why do you do that? And I was like, what the fuck? And I was like, do what? Just like, why do you, why do you always do that? Like, are you racist or something? And I was like, what the fuck? I was just like, whoa. I was like, are you a misogynist? And I was like, yo, where the fuck did this go? Like, you know, cause I was just, I'd just be doing like the Trump impersonation, just saying like, you know, like what he says. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. I'm not like perpetuating the same rhetoric because I hold those beliefs. No, that guy's such a dumbass. But like, you know, I was just doing impersonation. So then when that happened, I was just like, oh, you know, say like, nope, like Push if away. you can't, if you can't take like humor, you know what I'm saying? And like my shit's not even bad. You know what I'm saying? I've, what if she didn't know that you were doing an impersonation? But like I had known her for months by that time. That's a thing. But like what? If and like with our own cliques, like even with the professor or who yeah. we were both TAs for, like that was our thing. Like. Yeah, 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 she, she, she wouldn't oh. ask. She wouldn't okay. ask you if she did. She knew. Okay. So she she wanted to clarify if those are your stance too. <laughs> I mean, she had heard all the sort of uh, moments of dialogue that I yeah. would have in the classes. Uh -huh. So it's sort of like, I mean, I don't. Like, well, instead of uh, for uh, just subjectively on her side, yeah. for me, well, is that like I want to clarify. You know, you. Yeah, for like, me, you're like, kidding, you're right? making yeah. all this joke around at the same time, and you joke around, but I'm like. I don't want to assume, but mm -hmm. I want to clarify, so I'm gonna ask you. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was the approach, in essence. My, 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 my. You know. I think she might have had a bad day because after that, she just, <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's the thing. No, 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 no. No, no, because like after that, she slammed her book closed and just walked. And I was Jeez. just like, yeah, that was a bad day. I was like, whoa, what the hell? Oh. So whatever. Yeah. But anyways, anyways. Um, so back to the story, right? Like that happened. I was just like, yeah, that's a definite no. And then I went back to work for my former employer. Um, and then I actually met my girl on the first day. And uh, <laughs> okay, there's another backstory, but I'll keep it brief. When I quit that same job prior, um, some of my homies would be like, yo, there's this one chick named Elena. Have you ever seen her? And I was like, no. She's like, dude, she's pretty cute. And I was like, okay, whatever. You know, this is back then, right? And so <laughs> I remember one day I had to go pick up something from the store. And then my friends wanted to join along because they wanted to show me who Elena was. And I was just like, I don't see nobody. So when I got- There ain't no cute person here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hey. the only cute person in here. <laughs> see nobody <laughs> well, i didn't see like i didn't see her right because normally you know you wear name tags right so then when i uh went back to work for this employer right um that was kind of my first thing that i was looking for i was like who's elena like i never met her like i've been here for quite a long time but i've never met her and so i had like an opening shift and she had a closing shift so by the time i took my lunch she was actually just arriving. Mm -hmm. And because I opened, I was looking around the entire store, like name tag, name tag, name tag. Um, and I didn't you see nobody. You should just do it the intercom. Elena, please come to the front desk. Well, you'll be shit. mine. But, but there was this weird thing because when I saw her walk through the door to like the lunchroom, there was this weird like aura that oh I my God. I was just like, oh. I was it went, like, it went, it went. 
she walked in. <laughs> yeah, it's when I was just like, in. because the minute she walked through the door, I was just like, that's Elena. Uh, like, I guess. And, you know, we were just, I was just chatting it up with uh, other coworkers, and then they had to go back from their breaks. And uh, it was just me and Elena, and I was just like, Sorry. Okay, okay. I was like, hi, like, how you doing? Because she was chiming into the conversation. So I was like, hi, how you doing? And I was like, my name is Jonathan. She's like, oh, hi, I'm Elena. And we kind of chopped it up. <laughs> and so we kind of talked for like two, three weeks. Uh -huh. um, and then eventually I was just kind of like, you know what? I feel like asking her out, but I've never asked out anybody else. And she seems very cool. So if she says, no, this is going to be awkward as fuck now, you know? <laughs> and so I spent 15 minutes. Oh, cause an, another add, uh, add on to the story. Uh huh. Um, I was helping her, like giving her rides back home, that sort of stuff. So like, sometimes we just sit in the car and chat. And so one of those nights I was just like, all right, tonight's going to be the night I'm going to ask her. And I was just like, <sighs> I was just like, hey, you know, like, um, before you go, I just want to mention that you're a really cool person. You're really fun to talk to. But uh, I was just, and I'd have gaps, bro, just fucking awkward gaps. And you're then like, I'd go back and I'd be like, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that. I like you well, I, you know, I think you're a great person. I think you're cool. And 15 minutes of this shit, bro. I'm going I was over just like. <laughs> And knowing she's an earth sign, she knew what you were saying. She knew it. She just wanted you to say it. <laughs> That's what she tells me. She's yeah. like, bro, that was the longest 15 <laughs> minutes of my life. And then finally, right, I was just like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just going to ask it. Whatever happens, happens. Jesus, take the wheel. And I was like, hi, I was wondering if you would like to go out with me. And she said yes. And then I was like, oh, sunshine. Oh. Rainbow, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yes. But what, I don't know, she was just what I liked about and what I still like about my partner is just we're able to have like profound conversations, just touch on topics that like, you know, you can go really uh, deep on and that sort of stuff, just like politics, social life, or just like aspirations too. So that's kind of how it built up to it. And that's what's keep been keeping us running and going. You know what I'm that's saying? Cool. You know, what? Oh. Bef before you, before you actually got to the point of asking, there's those times in between the time and building up to that. It's really about, being able to spend time together. Mm -hmm. The idea that you work in the same place, yeah. mm -hmm. the fact that you gave her a ride, that's in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a certain amount of time, yeah. that's a time where you actually spend so much time closely with this, you know, the closer I yeah, get to, to you. Dude, you were, you were courting her and you didn't even know it. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in essence, it's really spending time, period. Yeah. Now, in the, in the, in the moment that you spend time with people, this is the process of really making that connection mm -hmm. and the way you uh, present yourself and the way you are being honest and being vulnerable, yeah. you know, and you know, that's how people get close to you. So yeah. it's a matter yeah. of time and what you do. Yeah. yeah that's, how, that's how we build relationship. That's how we build that human connection as we're talking about human connection. It's a mm -hmm. matter of time, even as a parent, actually. Like sometimes as a parent, like, you know, people like want to do stuff all the time. You don't have to. It's like, it's just a matter of being there, period. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah for real. If you're there with someone, that's in, in a, a time to get close and get to know each other. Yeah. So, yeah. And I think for a lot of my friends, what was surprising about my relationship beginnings was the fact that I had not gone out with anybody before, like on a real serious note. Um, and so it was just like in a matter of two, three weeks and that was it. And everybody's yeah. like, damn, two, three weeks? Like, just like that. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. I, I mean, so we, went on one, we went on one date, bro. It was like tacos. I mean, <laughs> tacos. Wow. Yeah, yeah, How yeah. can you go wrong? You Good know? for state. Good <laughs> but for yeah, state. it was just like, as Mike was saying, right? Just like conversations in the car and that sort of stuff and just working together and stuff. Like, that's just, I don't know. I just felt something really genuine yeah. and just natural uh, between us. And so. Yeah, if you gave me a ride every day, you probably, you probably asked me to. <laughs> Yeah, bro. I'm playing, I'm playing. If somebody gives me a ride every day, I'm sure you'll fall in love with me. Just just, every day. Yeah. Just kidding. All good, all good. I remember you, you, you used to always talk about the late night talks y'all used to have and all that. <laughs> Very late night talks. Yeah, bro. <laughs> Why do you have to say that? Kyle. He said very late night talks. We, we all had a very late night talks, you feel me? <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> I mean, yeah, there was one time where I stayed in the car. We were still talking, and it was like 3 a.m., and then she had a closing shift. She was like, I think I'm going to go to sleep. And I was like, 
I'm so fucked. I gotta wake up at eight. <laughs> <laughs> the sacrifices you make the things you do life. for love <laughs> the things you do for love so I think we're gonna do our sponsors real quick yes yes pew, pew, yes pew. Hey. I, was, I thought we had a pew 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 but realized we didn't alright for sponsors what's up y'all it's your boy DJ Asthmatic I got my mix out you got me feeling some type of way wow in correlation to today's subject too Human connection, all the songs all about it. Sometimes some type of connection, whether if it's love, hate, uh, I was gonna hate. <laughs> yeah, there actually is some songs. It's emotion because you know like, you hate to love. Yeah, I mean one of them has a song <laughs> "Fuck Boys" by Blast. So, shit. <laughs> but yeah, check it out. It's on SoundCloud. We're gonna have it in the link below. My most yeah. recent mix. Shout out to SoundCloud for the one thousand five hundred views. Let's go, okay, y'all. Okay. Okay. Nice. Clap it up, clap it up. Hey. Make sure um, to check that out. W- would you like to share who's got you fe- this feeling? This What am I saying? Oh. Who's got you feeling this type of way? Nobody. I just decided you just okay. do it. Are you also taking applications? Yeah, are you taking applications? <laughs> no. Or are you applying to something? No, I mean, honestly, y'all. Kyle's like- Google Doc form will be down below. <laughs> if you if you want to get fit, uh, shout out to his gym. Just don't He'll talk. Work you out. <laughs> no, honestly, I'm not really looking for no one Simone. right now. Yeah, I'm not looking for no one right now. But I mean, if you if a girl comes, I mean, it, if it comes, she comes. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> you're you're also taking application. No, well, you're not, you're, you're not, like when you apply for a, you know when you apply for a job, I'm they're like, we'll take your application. But, just, <laughs> but 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 I'm a really busy guy. That's the only thing. And, you know, sure, a girl, sure. a girl, that future girl deserves that time. You know what I'm saying? Unless for she sure. understands, and we come to an agreement. Yeah, so. but we'll, you'll take okay. it, you'll take applications. Uh, but you're not looking for it. But well, you know, yeah. also, just in case, so still, take it and put it in the vault. And I'm, and I'm working on myself, so let me work on myself mm-hmm. first. And no, yeah. Okay, go okay. The way. You gotta let my boy Kyle learn a little bit more about astronomy, bro. I <laughs> said sun, the center of the solar system. This guy said, "You mean Earth?" <laughs> oh my God. Let's go. <laughs> All right, that puts us into the speaking absurdity. About, yeah, speaking about Earth. Oh. Ooh, that segue. The this absurdity is about Earth. Absurd. <laughs> it's That's absurd. absurd. It's not about Earth, but like what happens on Earth. But um, okay, okay. Since we're talking about human connection, the earliest um, ways of communication was through cave paintings. Ah. Oh yeah. 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 Don't act like y'all knew that. Please act like you didn't know that. I, 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 <laughs> so, like, I know. So, I so did, you help me out, though. I'm sorry, but yeah, Simone. Yeah. Simone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Be Simone. I mean, Simone. I mean, it's obvious though, because you know, like cave paintings. But yeah, if you didn't know, now you know. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. All right, cave like, painting. Let's go. Cave paintings. Do we have um, graphics to do the? The more you know. Yeah. And a rainbow. <laughs> the meme. But going off of what you said, Mike, about like. The whole family thing, how like sometimes even like with your family and having kids and stuff, you just have to be there. And that's like, I think that's why I really loved that I grew up eating at the diner, the dining table, like as a family, as a whole, because I don't know, like those moments were some of the funniest moments ever. Like, you know, we would crack up so hard, can't even breathe. And that's why I really think like now, like I, I feel like my parents know me the most like out of everyone well like and my sister but like yeah yeah as they should because they spend most of your their time with you and so that so, break yeah. bread. Yeah. <laughs> break, break bread. bread. Yeah, break bread. Break bread. God, yeah. let's not go back to this. <laughs> Breaking bread like Jesus, money and everything, but somehow Jesus. Whoa. Yeah. Nice. Again, there's there's many ways in regards to like getting close to someone, right? Mm-hmm. It's one is like showing intent and yeah. being honest uh being vulnerable mm. to gain trust and being truthful yeah. and i think if you could do all those and you spend time enough time with someone you know people can like you period yeah, yeah. you know That's so true. but yeah but i know everybody has this different uh yeah. preferences and everybody you know it's like whatever floats their boat type but you just have to be you just have to be honest and be truthful to you know for yourself let me let me ask you all this. Mm. Okay, what was your biggest wall in terms of preventing human connection on a general basis? Tijuana. And yeah, <laughs> if you were to, 
Did you say Tijuana? <laughs> it's a State Farm sweater. That's why today, folks. It's a State Make Farm. Sure somebody get get it off from him. I'm just kidding. So, uh, like on a general basis, like why do you think that was your biggest wall? If you really think about it now. But if you don't have the answer for it, that's okay too. Um, let's see. Walls. Walls. Yes. Um, to be honest. Because with me, I have a very tight circle and like that's fine with me, you know, like I don't um, I don't aspire to have a big circle. I don't think anyone really does at like this age, but I wouldn't necessarily say like I had a wall built up. It's just I have no interest in sharing my personal stuff with you. Isn't you that kind of like walls that you put up, though? That's a moat. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean like there's no there's no it's not like if I have a certain let's say like certain personal issue, I don't feel the need to tell you that. It's not that because I'm insecure about it. If it comes up, then I could tell you if I want to, but like at the same time it's like I don't think I like some certain things are necessary. You know what I'm saying? Mm. that's yes because like the uh, um a few days ago me and my friend were talking about stuff like that and how like i don't necessarily share a lot with my friends and it's not necessarily because i have a wall up with them it's just because i don't feel the need to talk to them about it Mm. because i feel like too some of the biggest problems that i have either i find a solution myself or i go to my parents and talk to them with it Cause like more than likely, either them or my grandparents or my aunt and uncle have been through that, or something like that. That's something that I've learned, not growing up, but more when I got older in like my twenties. Mm. So, yeah. what conditions led you to be that, in a sense, to not wanting to share all aspects of your life with people? And so, where there's where did something happen in a sense, and that uh, kind of. Mm-hmm. Uh, like let you get to that condition i think from i was always like that from a young age Mm. i feel like i mean there are still times where i'm just like yeah i don't want to like connect with you that much i think it's because if we're talking like on a deep deep level like like bro like you're my brother you're my sister type Mm. like as in like brother as in like brother as in friend and sister as in friend i've always what's this called been like that since I was very young. Mm-hmm. And because I don't know, I think it's because I was taught that like, um, if anyone's going to help you, it's your family. Mm-hmm. So like in specific problems and stuff, then that's yeah. who I would go to. So it's a condition that led you to that, your family being always around and that's what you lean into. Yeah. Or lean to. Because it's like, if you're my friend, yeah, I'll always be there for you and I know you'll be there for me like if I do have a problem. But like that shit that like is... Because another thing, too, you have to think about it. Where is your friend's, what's your friend's position in life right now? Are you the same age as me? So I'm like, okay, like, you might not know the best solution to what my problem is. So I'm going to go to someone that I know and trust and um, has possibly gone through it. You know what I'm saying? Damn, that's crazy because I can't remember the last time I ever talk to my parents about an issue I had. That's I'd the always opposite. Go to no, friends. Yeah. There we go. The I'd always yeah. go to friends. Like even just growing up, it was sort of like, it was more of a trouble. More problems would arise to my already existing problem. If I try to bring it up with my parents, just cause like mm. they would understand. So yeah. just hearing you, I'm just like, damn, that's that Disney, like cute <laughs> shit, bro. Like just that family <laughs> closeness, like yeah. not as a diss, but just saying but yeah. like, you know, like that's so awesome. Cause like, I didn't have that shit, bro. I remember one time, bro, uh, I was hanging out with Kyle, and, uh, like, there was an accident where, incident where I kind of let, spilled some beans by accident. Mm-hmm. I told my dad, like, I was going to go to the park, and he was mm-hmm. like, why? And I was like, oh, fuck, here we go. <laughs> and I was just like, well, you know, I told him my situation, and then he was like, bro, don't be a bitch. Like, the oh. equivalent, right? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, well, that's great. And so. Yeah. And I think, too, like, growing up, like as a like teenager and stuff like i i um i never really like thought of them that way you know i never was like oh i can't go to my parents for that and there are some things that i don't go to my parents to you know yeah. Yeah. but i think in an overall sense i would go to them yeah. and like growing up yeah a little bit like even like 
from like last year, two years ago. Sometimes I would I wouldn't want like my parents' input because it would piss me off. Mm. But then again, I changed my mindset and was like, wait a minute. They don't necessarily they're not necessarily telling me this to piss me off. Their their intent is to help me. And it's the way I reciprocated it, which is led which led me to feel a certain way. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I think that played a big part of like me being able to communicate to my parents now is just like seeing where their intent is and yeah. seeing that they're coming from a place where because uh, obviously like different generations have different ways of going about things so i'm like okay this is how they grew up so that's why they're telling me this way mm -hmm. and it's like i have a choice whether to follow their lead or go on my own and learn which one was a better solution for, like sure. for example my aunt and uncle i had a problem with like some friends there were bad influences on me and at the time i was like nah it's fine like i i like i can hold my ground i like it's fine like they could be fake to each other but like i'm cool like i'm off i'm i'm cool off of that yeah. and they're just trying to tell me like look this is gonna bite you in the ass and i got irritated because i was like you guys don't know our relationships you guys don't know this is that i was mad but in the end, who was right? They were right. So it was like, I, I think also after that moment, I was like, wait a minute, maybe I should just like listen. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> but yeah, that's my personal experience with it. One thing, <clears throat> one thing I learned uh, recently mm -hmm. uh, is a friend of mine told me that you have to diversify where you find happiness. In a sense, right? You have to diversify who you can get close to or come to in terms mm -hmm. of, so it's not just one aspect. Yeah. So, you know, I think before I used to like just focus on that one entity to provide, give me that like the joy and happiness. Yeah. And once that thing breaks down, you know, mm -hmm. like w where now, where is it, right? And there's a sense of like, uh, I struggle with my my mental health, emotion, and all those things. And one thing, yeah, one thing I learned is that like, you can't just have one source of happiness. You have yeah. to have multiple. So when things doesn't go, there's always so something else in a sense that can keep you afloat in a sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, that's in terms of, well, yeah, what I'm sharing is that like, yeah, always have multiple sources yeah. to like take from in a sense whether it's happiness whether mm -hmm. it's advice in life in essence not to say, but take it all in a grain of salt of course yeah. but in a sense you have to have multiple so you can have a full view of one of the yeah. situation because if you take it only from one source that's mm -hmm. only one view and yeah. that view is just that angle a specific angle yeah and so if you have multiple then you can start to see the whole and yeah. so that's my advice that's yeah. interesting yeah, and I think that's kind of where, you know, that's the way I had to learn because, and this is why I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to get an education. Because like I said, part of it is you learn whatever field of study you're in, but it's also just about um, how you grow up, what ideas and perspectives and concepts you're taught also just exposed to in general. And so, um, you know, just unfortunately for just us people of color, right, oppression has led us to think primarily in binaries and that shit always pissed me off growing up because like why does it have to be either or like why can't it be just complex and looking at different perspectives and sort of formulating mm. something from that and so that's kind of how i felt that that's why i couldn't never let i could never go to my parents for advice because they always thought on binaries and it's just like you have to understand the context and the specifics of things to fully help me and just mm. you know the yeah. habit of not yeah. listening mm. And so that's why I've always been like very um, a, a proponent, you know, what I'm saying of perspectives and listening and understanding and not jumping to conclusions on stuff. Because how the fuck can you paint a picture when you only know like a quadrant of it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why it's just like, you know, because <clears throat> yeah. I always went to my friends. I mean, yeah. Kyle would say something, then another homie would say something yeah. and another homie would say some. And so taking all the perspectives, I'm just like, OK, I see where Kyle's going. I see where this other homie's going. Yeah. I think this is how I'm going to approach the situation or how I'm going to handle yeah. uh, my, my, my predicament. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I mean, like, yeah. you know, for me, my goal is like as a parent later on, right. Mm -hmm. um, tomorrow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Congratulations. <laughs> but as a parent, right. I know 
growing up is going to like for my kids, right? Growing up, it's going to be easy because Mm -hmm. they'll just be like, mom, dad, yeah, dad, dad. Like they'll just always go to me. Mm -hmm. But because of the way that I grew up, I know that at a certain point, you know, I'm saying they're not going to go to me as often. And I get that. That's just part of growing up. But I just hope that they see me as somebody who always has an ear to lend or somebody who's always willing to listen and give them suggestions, Mm -hmm. advice, not necessarily tell them what to do much like in my experience, but just be like, you know what, here's my take on things based on what you told me about, you know, your friend who didn't want to give you back your crayon, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Or whatever, right? Like, here's how I see it. And the concluding statement is always the important one because if you say some petty shit like, that's how I would do it. You know, like you're not helping, right? Yeah. But if you end on something like, honestly, this is my take of it. This is how I see it. Um, you know, just some advice. Yeah. Uh, sure. you, you, and, you do you. And like, too, I think with the whole perspective things, because my mom and dad are two very different people. Mm. And like, whenever I come to them, because I complain to them a lot about shit. Right. And like sometimes I think, man, do they think I'm a terrible person? Because I always complain. But Why like, is my cause, chicken gone? Because they're like, they're my, because I, I feel like they're my outlet sometimes. Yeah. And my dad's always like, my dad, why like growing up, I kind of like, like also like, oh, I hate like sometimes going to them because like my dad would always play devil's advocate and would tell me like, look at it from different perspectives mm. too. So I'm like, oh, okay. Like now that I've grown up, more i'm just like i understand now like stop being so defensive stop being so like because my parents always tell me you're so sensitive which is true Mm -hmm. i'm very sensitive to stuff but like (laughs) now that i understand like okay like i see where you're coming from i see where you're coming from now i'm like okay like what's that like how how will i handle things yeah yeah just uh not to take away anything from your relationship with your parents it's a beautiful thing and the way what they've done a great job in a sense of having that being able to build that trust yeah uh, in terms of the family which is a beautiful thing Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and i think also sometimes it's me because sometimes my parents are the last to know stuff yeah like my parents like how come you didn't tell us like the first time they found out like that I had, I was going to transfer at this time. They were like, I, I was talking to my grandparents. I was like, oh, yeah, this happened. And then my grandma was like, oh, like, what did your dad say about it? And my dad was like, I just found out now. <laughs> so I think it's also me because yeah. another thing I've learned growing up or like that I've been taught, no one's going to, you're the, no one's going to get you out of your problem. How do I explain this? Like the only person that's going to get you out of, your whole is yourself. Mm. Yeah. So like sometimes that's why I struggle asking for help. It's, but yeah. It's always gonna be yeah. yourself, no matter how many people give you yeah. the advice. Yeah. So don't look at it as like I shouldn't take anyone's advice because I'm the yeah. only one that's gonna but look at it as like I wanna grab all the information that I can mm. get and be objective as objective as I can. Yeah. And then I'll decide because I will be the one that's getting myself out. So yeah, you know, that, in that, in that that's process. what I didn't realize when I was younger. Mm. But like growing up, that's why I started opening up more. Yeah. And stuff. So yeah. yeah. For sure. Um, I feel like my biggest wall, fuck, here we go. <laughs> uh, I think I feel like I'm going through this right now with myself. Um, actually, that's why I got the scorpion tattoo. Um, <laughs> I had like a very like uh, realization last week. Uh, uh, big shout out to people that, you know, really care about me and love me. Um, it's to remind me that um, my energy can sting people whether if it's positively or negatively and how like I have some type of presence in a room, you know what I'm saying? Or with people, like I, I can bring people down just as much as lift people up, right? So I think in order for myself to become that best person, right? Um, I have to bring down my wall and my wall stems with just going through very hard traumas in terms of death, breakups, all in sh- such a short amount of time, right? So I feel like with me, trying to uh, progress deeper with people that I love and care about, I'm limiting myself to my most potential as a whole. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Cause you know, I feel like with the people that I did hurt or what I did to myself, I'm very hard on myself. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I was angry. I never forgave myself for those actions. You know what I'm saying? Even though it, was, it might've been forgiven a long time ago, I just never let that be with myself. And I let that anger kind of build up. So I created this wall subconsciously, if that makes sense. So I feel like it's time for me 
to bring down those walls. So for you guys, you guys should make sure you challenge me with that. You know what I'm saying? If you feel like it's there, let me know. Put me on the spot with it because I'm ready to take the next leap into something more spiritual, more deeper yeah. within myself. I feel like I challenge you a lot. Yeah, Would you, you do challenge me a lot. Yeah, yeah, all the time, all the time. Yeah. Best friends. <laughs> <laughs> you challenge me all the time and you challenge me all the time too. You guys just, yeah, but I don't know. I just feel like if I want to give my all to others and I, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm put in a lot of positions like that, you know what I'm saying? Um, I have to make sure I give my all now and I learn it now or else I'm going to let those people down and I don't want yeah. to let those people down. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're saying that you should be able to give your all? In a sense? Um, no, it's like, it's like I limit my, uh, my openness. Oh, you know what I'm okay, saying? Like, okay, even okay. if it's very small, sometimes I'll do that. You know what I mean? When they're trying to um, progress it deeper. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Do you, do you feel like you have a wall within yourself? Yeah, that's exactly mm, what it is. Okay. That's exactly what it is because, and I'm like stemming from it. It's uh, just like I said, you know, my past traumas of going, of getting my heart like literally stabbed, you know what I'm saying? And I know it's dangerous because when I go into that place, I'm very self-destructive, mm. you know what I'm saying? And that's what I mean by like, I can really bring down a room, you know, you know what I mean? You'll, you'll feel my sadness, you'll feel my anger, you'll feel my frustration, yeah. you know what I'm saying? That's I'm like, I'm, go, go oh, ahead. sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm like, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know, I, I, don't, I think you guys have probably seen me in my darkest times before, I know you have, like, you know how, how much that brings down everything, right? It's very uh, scary sometimes. <laughs> I have my own self-destructive tendencies too. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> when right. she goes down, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna blow up the world. <laughs> yeah. Right? yeah. Like, it's so scary too, because like, like when you're in that, like, kind of like, when shit's like going down inside of you, it's so hard to stop yourself from snapping at the last uh -huh. thing. You know what I'm uh -huh. saying? Uh -huh. And like, I feel like um, what 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 you were saying kind of reminded me of was this thing, like, I, I don't know the exact saying, but like all of us have a certain amount of evil inside of us, you know, all obviously, but it's your actions and how you go about it determine you said ego? who you are. Ego? No, evil. 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 Or also ego too, I guess. Yeah. Would you say in a sense? Yeah. Um, ego? Yeah. You know what it is? It's it's in a sense of when we stop caring, that's the dangerous aspect of being self destructive because Yeah, because that's we like, can do anything and everything and not care. That's like borderline sociopath. That's, that's you the, know, like that's the that's the like the lowest point when you become self destructive is when you stop caring yeah. for yourself. And when you right. stop caring for yourself, that means that you stop caring for people around you. Yeah. And then that becomes a, a a door opening to doing whatever you want yeah. and yeah. not caring about what the impact is. Yeah. You were yeah. going to say, Jonathan? Tired of being what you <laughs> want me to be. <laughs> no, but I think what I, I think, you know, I, Kyle, I've known you for the longest time yeah. and that sort of stuff. And I think one of, <laughs> I don't want to say like problems because that sounds insulting. Hey, one of your biggest bro. dilemmas <laughs> I'm not even sure, bro. <laughs> is that, you know, I'm saying like, let me put it like this, bro. I don't know how, but you're like a big ass battery. Right. <laughs> and you just are able to connect with people yeah. and you give like your battery energy juice to everybody else. But the thing is, a battery has a certain capacity and you tend to stretch yourself thin to the point where you give all this energy, all this, you know, what I'm saying like juice. Right. And then you leave yourself with like very little and yeah. then you end up in yeah, dire well. situations where it's just sort of like like. You know, you're a great person, hands down, you know what I'm saying? One of the most down-to-earth motherfuckers I know, you know what I'm saying? But when you deplete your resources, your energy level so much, you're left vulnerable. And it's just sort of like, I know you want to make everybody else feel good and that sort of stuff. But you also have to, like, take time to yourself, too, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, can't really, can't really be, like, you know tripping about other people all the time and like not giving yourself any attention at all that's true. and so it's just sort of like that's one of the things that i've noticed where it's uh just i mean on top of the just the fact that you're just a very busy person right so like time for you is <laughs> yeah. like stretched very thin too but it's also just like you know what i'm saying like just from time to time being mindful to take time to yourself so you don't end up in these situations where you kind of near like self-destruction yes. mm -hmm. yeah, you know yeah, what i'm yeah. saying and I think the, the way to do that is really setting your boundaries, one. Yeah. 
and understanding your own capacity and being honest with your capacity and being able to communicate your capacity. And I think sometimes as people that wants to do all these things for other people, we tend to let not being honest with our capacity. Yeah. And so when we're not honest with our capacity because we don't want to, uh, what do you call it, make him feel uh, or disappoint them in essence. Let, let, yeah. let down, the idea, yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah. don't want to make them feel disappointed. So we give it all and not understanding that like we were, because I'm, I'm, I'm like that too, because I'll be like, oh yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that. And I'm like, oh shit, I can't do all this. Yeah. <laughs> That's me too. Like you're, pull, you're pouring into everybody's cup from your cup but who's pouring into yours yeah so it's not saying that you shouldn't pour you should yeah. pour where and understand that's the thing it's like you have to know understand you have to understand internally mm-hmm. your own capacity emotionally uh, physically economically all aspects mm-hmm. of you as yeah. an individual and set boundaries still yeah. you still mean well but just have to you right, the yeah. boundary. You yeah. gotta give yourself time to recharge, homie. Recharge, yes. Yeah, That's yeah. Fact. And I think That's you're fact. doing that now a lot. Yeah, I'm trying you know my saying? best to. One yeah, like, have you seen your quotes? My I'm quotes. Like, all right. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm fire. Like, right. <laughs> Wait, quotes or yeah, clothes? Like right here. Me, His me, fits. Quotes. Let me give one of the quotes. quotes. Oh, quotes. I said quotes, guys. I thought you said clothes. I was like, damn, bro, look at the kicks, though. Yeah, his clothes. His quotes. Quotes? Oh, quotes. Yeah, yeah that he'd be posting. Okay. And also your clothes. That's how you know yeah. someone's taking care of them. Yeah. Oh, okay. God. Here's one. Because their kids are fine. Their kids are getting better. <laughs> 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 so better. So here's, here's one. Here's one. This is pretty good. There is much that is difficult for the spirit, the strong, reverent spirit that would bear much, but the difficult and the most difficult are what its strength demands. Ooh. That's just pretty deep. Yeah. And so I, <laughs> yeah, crazy, right? And I think one thing that I want to touch on, right, is yeah. like as you mentioned earlier, right? Everybody has a certain amount of evil. And mm. I don't like this binary of like good and bad, right? Because like life is about positive energies and negative energies, right? It's all about balance. Yeah. And so, you know, you'll have times of challenge and then times of balance. And so it's just sort of like, you know, they balance each other out, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so mm. it's just sort of like kind of like what you said, Mike, right? Like when you start feeling like down and all this sort of stuff that's kind of like the negative energy pouring out that sort of stuff but you know yeah there's highs and lows in life sometimes yeah. we just need yeah. to you know take care of ourselves True. you know what i'm saying but Thank you know you. it's another thing is because in the way you give it also gives you joy also in yeah. a sense right yeah. so yeah. it's just a matter of balancing in a sense and yeah we're not one or the other we have both we yeah. can be good and evil it's really a choice that we make in yeah. terms of how we act. So it's funny, like the first aspect is that we're talking about how to make that connection, and now we're practicing that connection. We're practicing it and, uh, you know, oh, telling girl. our truth, yeah. you know, telling our stories. It's just an aspect of building a relationship with each other mm-hmm. and getting to know each other. Yeah. You know, but, we, uh, you know, it's one thing that we don't spend enough much t- enough time together. Yeah. We should yeah. do a, we should do you, a, a retreat. Have you once seen this guy's once schedule? Once school. Yeah, when they Oh, we got it. We gotta do a retreat. Three, months, three oh, more weeks. Because we're gonna celebrate after our semester ends. Uh, we should all celebrate. Just go with us. Yeah, just drinks. go with us. Okay, just hit me up. Y'all know right. my number. Let's let's have a retreat. No, I don't yeah. have your number. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I just show up. <laughs> a sleepover. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. All right, man. I think you're like I think you're like Venus right now, but you're not you're not Mercury quite yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh Venus is uh, what is Venus? After Mercury? Yeah. Uh, no, like it was the significant of Venus, like what it's it's. Isn't it the like love planet? That's right. Let's oh, go. go. In, in astrology. <laughs> well, I was going astronomy because <laughs> the sun is at the center. Then the first planet is Mercury, and uh, then after that, the yeah. next orbit. But he was saying, is, "What is what Venus?" A guy, what a guy. No, the, oh, it's the love planet, according to astrology. Human connection. Well, uh, that's what it is. Human connection is yeah. love, right? Love. Yeah. In essence, and not just in a romantic way, it's love for people, period. Yeah. Facts. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Yeah, me. So, yeah, I just want to say I love y'all. I love you, y'all Jonathan. Too? I love you, Kyle. Love y'all I love too? you, Simone. You know, and, you know, I really Hearts mean out. that. You, you know, know, if it mean? wasn't for human connection and just us, you know, really feeling tight about each other, we would never have PYB. Boom. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's what keeps Fact. us going. That's right. <laughs> and that's the end of our podcast. Ah. Hey, shout out to Brian again. Thank you so much for this yeah, idea. Yeah, thank you, Brian. 
if well, you're, watch us like totally butcher what he meant and be like, oh, that's not what oh, I meant. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, if, if for any viewers, if y'all want to, you know, let us know by any idea or topics, we'll be posting some stuff. So just comment yeah. below. And we'll comment if you want a shout out. We'll shout you out. Yeah, and yes, if you yes, want sir. us to do something that's on your mind, then let us know. Let us know. know. Let's know. Oh, let's, let's have a shout out. Y'all have any shout out for anyone? Let's go. Shout out me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Kyle. Shout out. Right, any shout out? Friend. Let's go. Wait, what do you mean by shout Just out? Just shout out to anyone. Person, like, oh. Any person or anything. Shout out. I right, shout out to Phil Excellence Club of the Clubhouse. Shout out to, yeah, that's that's my kid, folks. Let's go. Go. Shout out, baby. I love you. Ah, let's go. <laughs> shout out to hey, the baby. Shout out to my little bro, Isaiah. That's I'm going to see up. you soon, bro. I'm going to see you soon. Hey, let's go. Uh, shout out to my sister. I'm glad you love Harry Potter as much as I do. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, for watching again. We'll see you next week. Bye. Hey. All right. Wow, that was quick. That was, that was so fast. Hey, 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 hey. I'm not a rapper.